Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. This is a Chamber of Commerce day for the beautiful Susquehanna Valley. We're here at the Susquehanna Valley Country Club, home of the 27th Annual Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament. Seventh straight year that we've been here broadcasting live from the tournament. Played in the tournament this morning. We shot 22 under par. Seems like a big number, uh, but... But we thought that that was the number that if we put it up there, regardless of accuracy, would win. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great to be with. What? <laughs> we want the wow factor. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, Adam Purdy and I had a little friendly um, wager this morning. It's not a bet. It's an if and only if. If, yes. if your score happens to be higher, then all. It's an if, then. Well, to his credit, he asked me first how we finished. I said four under. He looked at me, he goes, three. So now we're trying to find out if maybe the afternoon counts. So we're trying to find that out. But that's all part of the fun of the event. Everybody's having a great time here. Uh, Between $20,000 and $30,000 is going to be raised for the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. Another great day for that. So we know that it's going to be in that neighborhood uh, it could be could be a record number. We're we're going to find out. Obviously, boy, probably a couple weeks, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, we did. Uh, we were two over, two under on the front, two under on the back. Shot four under. Uh, Craig was outstanding. He could not have played. I mean, he was great today. Uh, I thought uh, the chief, as the day went back night, he was outstanding. Uh, the suit uh, putted well. Short game was was good at times. There are a lot more shots. It was a little chilly to start the morning, but it warmed up rather quickly. And when that happened, then uh, Chief got the game going. Yeah, he absolutely did. Mm-hmm. You know, now again, once again, I don't think the people here appreciated the suit using an ash can to stay warm. But I mean, that's you know, it's a, I just I, <laughs> I, I do, do you worry about? It? There, I do. A, we all do. There are times where you know he grew up away from other people. Uh, it's just oh, okay. <laughs> and right now, though, he he did suffer back spasms today. And any time it flared up, which was what did we shoot sixty eight today, sixty six, sixty six. So it flared up sixty two times, <laughs> and <laughs> he went over to the medical facility today. He has to go back tomorrow for an adjustment. And I predict on Friday he'll have to go back for an adjustment. I predict on Saturday he'll be cured. (laughs) Just a prediction. Uh, We're waiting to find out the ruling on Tom Wilson of the Washington Capitals. Again, what I don't like is that, uh, to me, if you launch yourself, there is an intent to go high. Right? And that... To me, you watch him. Hey, why is the right skate in the air? Speaking of that, we got the uh, play-by-play call of the day yeah. from last night. And here it is, yeah. last night's call of the day. Puck stolen as Bono went down in a two-on-one. Do they have anything left in the tank? Backstrom coming here. He'll hold and now bring it across and a shot. They score! They score! Alex Ovechkin with 107 to go. It's four, three, Washington here in Pittsburgh. I get paid by the game. <laughs> We're winning. <laughs> no, that was the Capitals. That was the Capitals. It was a great play. Uh, I mean, because the Penguins were putting the heat on it. looked like they were going to get. Although Keith Jones brought up a, g- a great point on, on NBC late last night about Phil Kessel. Phil does not look the same out there. I just And I heard Mike Lang in an interview in Pittsburgh yesterday morning leading up to last night's game. Something may have happened late in the season. Maybe during the last regular season game they had against the Flyers, and obviously they're not going to release whether it's upper body injury, lower body injury. Well, it's the NHL. Exactly. I mean, lower body. What? 
could be a toe <laughs> to, to a hip. Who knows? I mean, the NHL does not get specific about injuries. They take the HIPAA thing as far as you can take it. He just doesn't seem like his aggressive forward right, self no, out they, there and they, on the and ice. They need that. Although I thought Malkin stepped in and played well last night. They needed him in last his night. first game back. Yeah. He'll be better and more into the flow in Game Four. They'll need him to be. Uh, but Ovechkin did score last. That's a big goal for him. Big goal for Washington. Up two games to one with Game Four. A game that the that it would be strongly recommended that the Penguins win. You know, so I don't use silly things like must win. Okay. If they don't win, they are actually playing another game. So it's not must win, but it's strongly suggested that for the health of their team in the series, they, they should win it. Uh, that'll be tomorrow night. We'll find out about Tom Wilson later. Cavaliers won last night. Golden State won last night. And Winnipeg won big last night, uh, 7-4. to four over Nashville after Nashville jumped out to a 3 nothing lead in that game in the first period. And Winnipeg came back. They're up two games to one in that series. I, I listened to something on the way in today, and I was listening to um, Golf Channel on Sirius, and it was uh, Mark Adams. And he played back a piece that aired on Golf Channel last night on Golf Central. It was a piece about what Tiger Woods means and what would it mean to the sport of golf and the tour once his skills really diminish and he essentially retires and is off the tour. And there were some bleak commentary in there at times. And it's interesting, but it is interesting that Tiger Woods... And this goes and this goes beyond just the sport of golf. I know we're here at a golf course, but this is a commentary that goes beyond the sport of golf. We have people that love their teams. We have a lot of Phillies fans here, obviously. We carry the Phillies in WKOK. If we're going to talk about the Phillies, we can talk easily about Nick Williams and Scott Kingery and Reese Hoskins and Jake Garrietta. And the fans here know right away what we're talking about. There's also a very good chance that if we bring up somebody, another team, they might only know a little bit about them. But when it comes to their team, they know a lot. There are very few figures, and part of this is ESPN, because ESPN has taken certain individuals and they have vaulted them into their own category. Essentially, as a professional, what has Tim Tebow done? I mean, great college player, Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, he's playing double-A baseball right now. He had an okay season with the Broncos. He won the playoff game against Pittsburgh. But a lot of that was based on defense the rushing game, and so forth. And he hung in there most of the time. All right, That's just being fair. Right? Uh, against Pittsburgh, though, I thought he played well, and he was a big reason why they won the game in the playoff game. But that was a game. Tebow. LeBron James. The NBA has been interesting. They've been able to take the baton from Bird and Magic, which helped resurrect the NBA, which was really in trouble at the time. They turned it into more of a team game. So then the next part where there was a little bit of a gap and then Jordan took over. After Jordan, yeah, you had Shaq and Kobe, but really was it really... They're really, really good, but did they transcend the game? Now, Kobe thinks he did, but in reality, he didn't. Shaq in some ways did in pop culture, but then LeBron James came along. I'll give you an example. James Harden is a really, really good player. But he doesn't transcend the game. As good, In fact, there's a very good chance when they hand out the MVP this year, James Harden will be the MVP. But he doesn't transcend the game. He may be in a couple of, of State Farm commercials with Chris Paul, which is great, and Ariza, that's fine. But it doesn't transcend the game. Steph Curry's close. He's getting there. I'll tell you, with young kids, they love him. Because, again, he shoots the three ball. And I'll tell you, when he walked into the Penn State pit game in Brooklyn, because he, he, he was there the night before playing, then he did the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. 
Well, he came over to the Penn State pit game, watched the second half of the game. Well, it was a big deal to everybody that he was around. So there maybe there's that. Well, New Orleans was up seven, eight points last night, late first, early second, when Curry finally got on the floor last night. Thunderous ovation. You'd have thought Golden State was leading at that point. Right. But, again, that's Golden State's crowd. Yes. Right? So they're going to be like that. Uh, who transcends the game in baseball? Nobody. Now, Mike Trout is a great player, but there's Bonnie. Bonnie's Bonnie waving. down the first tee. Bonnie's like, hit him long and straight. 17 under par. 17 under par. Whoa. Yeah, we're 22. <laughs> <laughs> that was because of an eagle on 18. Uh, so, <laughs> the, uh, but Trout plays late night games. You don't really get to see him. You hear about him. You see some highlights. Harper, to a point, does he transcend the game? The Cubs, when they won a couple of years ago, got great ratings. He's surprised Harper's team? now leading off. Oh, I don't know. I haven't even thought about that. But we'll, we'll get to that in a couple of days about where guys are hitting based on analytics. But, it, but baseball doesn't have anybody that transcends the game. You know, the guy that has a chance to is Otani. All right? From Japan, pitches, hits. He's doing something that really nobody has done since the days of Babe Ruth. Where, uh, baseball doesn't have Babe Ruths today. You know, now, baseball, when Babe Ruth played, was the only show in town. There was no NHL, no NBA. right? The NFL, I mean, Babe Ruth came up in the teens. The NFL didn't start till 1920. Right? And then, then it was in small towns and to, you know, it wasn't until when Ruth was later in his career, but the Yankees won the World Series in 32. So the Giants got into the first two championship games in 33 and 34 against the Bears. All right? Then football started on a path, but didn't really get popular until the 50s. We don't have transcendent figures in baseball. Football is so well established, I think people know about other teams. Uh, you know, you may be an Eagles fan, but you know all about how the Giants drafted. You know who Eli Manning is. You know who OBJ is. You know who Saquon Barkley is. All right? It, it, football's one sport where I think fans of one team know a lot about the other teams that they play. We're heading into an interesting time. Tiger Woods, this is a time there's great depth in the sport of golf. And that's what this piece was about. Justin Thomas is a heck of a player. Jordan Spieth is a heck of a player. You know, Rory McIlroy has times where he can be, but there's been nobody that's picked up that mantle. When Tiger's in the field, even at the age of 42, they claim that the golf tournament makes an extra eight to ten million just by his pure presence. If he's in contention, the ratings go up literally better than 100 percent from the year before. If he's in contention. When he played, uh, wasn't I think it was the Honda Classic because he finished second at the Valspar, right? Honda Classic, twelve point type. Tiger impresses. This is Monday. Tiger impresses, right? He finished twelfth. Justin Thomas made three incredible shots to win the tournament, right? And Tiger impress. He finished twelfth. And to be honest with you, everyone's talking about. The Masters was a step forward for him, but he wasn't a contender at the Masters. Well, look what Jim, yeah, they, they were on those little 15-minute Masters right. highlights right. on late night, Thursday night and Friday night. I mean, that was how Jim Nance let it off. He goes, this is the most highly anticipated Masters in a decade. Right. Well, at, you know, well, Tiger had, had contended in two tournaments. Mickelson had won, right? So Mickelson had won a tournament. Who He was the second biggest name in golf. Uh, and Justin Thomas had won. Spieth had been playing well. So you know, he had, so he had some big names. But he carries the day. I'm wondering if we've put so much on certain individuals that in order to try and attract as many casual fans as possible that we're – that, look, Tiger's going to retire at some point, maybe five years, who knows. LeBron James is going to be gone. LeBron James is not young anymore, as great as he's played. I think there's another part, too. 
that uh, and hockey doesn't have a transcendent figure. There's no Gretzky. There's no Bobby Orr. There's no Mario Lemieux. Crosby's really, really good. Ovechkin's really, really good. But they don't transcend. John McEnroe transcended. Hey, okay? Roger Federer doesn't. Okay, it, it's not that Roger Federer isn't possibly the greatest tennis player of all time. You can make an argument that he is, but that doesn't mean you transcend the sport. John McEnroe, in terms of number of major championships and so forth, transcended the sport just because he was a personality that could also play great tennis, great tennis. But you, you don't. We're losing more and more of those transcended figures. Because there is nobody that's going to replace LeBron James as a transcendent figure. And let's be honest about it. Let's take LeBron James and Tiger Woods both. They both get exponentially more criticism than they deserve whenever they fail. They also get exponentially more praise when they when they succeed than they deserve. There's, there's going to be more of a, a medium. Oh, LeBron. Look, LeBron does some great things. It's not the first time I've ever seen it. Okay. Not the first time. Yeah, but this year, I mean, there's really no other. <laughs> there's really not much, no, no, no much else on the on that team that's really but, backing well, him up. Well, I understand that, but like, look at Toronto. DeRozan's a good player. Lowry's a good player, but they don't transcend the game. It doesn't. And it, you know, it doesn't. They don't. And I wonder if we're getting to a point in sports where we're running out of transcendent because they tried to rate, make Rory McIlroy the next Tiger Woods. The next transcendent figure didn't work. Didn't work. You know, I, it may be Steve that we're running out of heroes, in a sense. You know, when I when we were growing up in the fifties and sixties as kids, young kids, we we had heroes. We looked up in in sports figures. They were our heroes. And now, you know, you look at it and say, who who would if I was a kid today, who would be my sports hero? Uh, because I'm a Penguins fan, it might be Sidney Crosby, but that's about it. I can't think of any real heroes the way we looked at them in our in our generations. You have to have must-see individuals. I'll give you an example who a must-see individual was in the history of our lifetime. Right? Whether you liked him or not, Muhammad Ali. Now, Ali actually had a lot of fights on free TV. A lot of fights were on free TV. Okay, whether you liked him and wanted him to win, or you didn't like him, you had to watch Muhammad Ali. My brother and I watched any time Ali was on, we watched, and it didn't matter if we liked him or I didn't. That, that, that's irrelevant. Right? And in the process, he made people around him stars: Foreman, Frazier, Kenny Norton, Cosell. <laughs> Howard would dispute that. I tra- but still, it was a point Jerry, to watch on Jerry, TV. I transcend sports. But it was but leading up to every fight. It was an it was appointment TV to watch. Right. Oh, what what are those two going to talk about next? You should hear Johnny Holiday in the Howard Cassell stories. Because remember, Johnny did speaking in sports. Okay, which was right after Cassell. So Johnny be online listening to Howard. <laughs> Angel. I can't hear. <laughs> Johnny, you know darn well Johnny can make me roll and laugh <laughs> harder than anybody in the planet. Uh, well, but, you, well, the three of you, you and Holiday and the law firm of Jones, Girardi and Holiday, oh, we had held a, court there a couple months we ago. We had a night at the Nittany Lion Inn down in, at Whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> we just couldn't stop laughing for two and a half hours at one story after another. It, yeah, if yeah, you guys have heard of Johnny and all the great stuff he's done with nationally, the Olympics, Maryland football and basketball, he's an even better guy than he is an announcer. Uh, as as he always he as he always tells tells people, he says, "All right, he says good thing Steve lives in State College, and I live down here near D.C." He says, because if we live 45 minutes apart, our wives would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> you mean you're going out to dinner again? Come on. All right. Hey, we'll take a break. Beautiful Susquehanna Valley Country Club. It's going to be a great day when it's all said and done, not just weather-wise and not just in terms of the fun quotient on the golf course, but for the greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. It looks like we're going to raise between twenty dollars and $30,000 for one of the really great charities in our area. 27th Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament, seventh year that we've been here as we continue on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Sunbury Motors.
When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Subway Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Merth family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle's worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC way? The SMC way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Hey, broadcast extravaganza is only we can do it. It's being brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. And we're looking right at the dealership now. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. That putt here on nine was just a bit short. This putt will break from right to left. Maybe they play it about maybe six inches out to the right. It should be able to fall into the hole. It's about 25 feet. Up over the ball. A couple of practice swings. Now takes a look as the flag is starched and still in because they're off the green. Brings the putter back, strokes it. Out to the right. Now it's going to make a turn to the left. Probably too much speed. He rolls it past the hole, maybe about three feet or so. And they're staring at a long putt for a par. They're like, oh, man, we could have had the chutter there. <laughs> <laughs> this year I did not take it out of the bag. By the way, if you're wondering, our guy, a.k.a. Le Suit, it's kind of a French way to make it sound fancier than it really is. Classy. Le Suit, back spasms. And uh, he has to go back in tomorrow for an adjustment. I think it was about the sixth hole this morning when that took place, give or take. We we shot 66 today. Not bad. Yeah. And on 62 of the shots, he complained about his back. I think you've no- made notations <laughs> on the four where it seemed pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right, one more shot here on nine. He will use the putter despite being off the green. He's going to play it out to the right. All right, long look with the brimmed hat. Now brings the putter back, strikes it, pops over the fringe. Now sliding to the right is going to be short. And they'll go to 10, currently at one under par. Let's go to Gary McCord at 16. (laughs) (laughs) Quite a few of the greens this morning were challenging. Uh, Some of the greens here, I've always felt... Here's one of the challenges I've felt with the greens here. And the challenge has always been at size. It's an, old, it's an older course here. Usually on older courses, you'll find smaller greens. Marion, for example, smaller greens, older course. Um, you'll find, a, I'm trying to think, Troon. Troon in Scotland, smaller greens. Uh, and Scotland normally has larger greens. There, not, not all of them. Like nine, for example, it's a good size green here. But take, for example... Um, one smaller green. We had the two. Remember, I hit that one on two. We thought for sure I was what ten feet away. It rolled off. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm talking like I hit it to the front of the green, and it rolled off because the green's not very big. And on the back nine this morning, the wind was really starting yeah. to whip up, and that was the one that I hit that, that gap wedge on 14, which yeah. we thought was in the center again, and has a backstop. Yeah. And that one rolled off the green. And then again, I did not fly the hole. I mean, I'm talking like I hit to the front of the hole. And when I say greens challenging, a lot of them aren't yeah. level. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, un- they're yeah. undulating greens. Yeah. I-, I love this track. I think it's a great course to play. I've enjoyed it. Every time I've played this course, I've really liked it. Uh, back to the topic we were discussing earlier. I think Bob Buner made a good point. Like, who are our heroes today? I think ESPN has tried to make heroes uh, by the way they do their highlight packages and so forth, because they need that for ratings. It's not something where you're talking about uh, intellectual honesty here. Well, we keep They're the, trying to get more people to watch, and they yeah. think that that's the ticket to doing it. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the business of it. But I think what's ha- 
for example, what makes Penn State football really special? Yeah, there have been some special players. There's no question. We see an autographed item from Kerry Collins there. We've got guys today like Keith Conlon, Trey Bauer, Rogers Alexander, uh, uh, Tim Sweeney, Wally Richardson all here today. All have made incredible marks on the history of Penn State football and made big plays, all of them. National championships, undefeated seasons, and so forth. But the constant has been the brand of Penn State football. The brand does mean something. Penn State means something. Penn State football means something. The Phillies as a brand mean something. Okay? The, uh, the Eagles as a brand mean something. The Celtics as a brand mean something. Right? The Cubs as a brand. The Red Sox, the Yankees as brands mean something. So there have been certain elements, Ohio State football, Penn State, USC, Texas, Alabama, obviously, maybe a little bit in that direction, Clemson, that have put themselves as a brand, regardless of whether you know the players or not, that you as a casual fan will watch. Penn State's going to play Ohio State. Well, you may not know who all the Ohio State players are, but you're a Penn State fan, you're going to watch. You're an Ohio State fan. You You may not know outside of Trace McSorley much about the Penn State players, but you're going to watch because it's Penn State and Ohio State playing. So the brand names are there. It's difficult for networks to to wrap themselves around a brand. They try to, but but they try to tag individuals as heroes. They said Muhammad Ali used to be watch, must-see TV for us as kids, but we didn't have as many options either. There were very few. I think with college football, but what they tried to do in terms of branding was make it about head coaches. Yeah. But when they announced that Ohio State was playing Penn State, it was Woody Hayes against Joe Paterno, Bo Schembechler Beckler against Woody Hayes or Joe Paterno. It was always about the coaches and not so much the players. Because they were the constants. Exactly. They were the constants there. So Jay Wright and Villanova, that's a constant that's going on. I'll give you an example of what brand, what brand means. Uh, let's go back to the day the Penn State wrestling team had that dramatic win in the NCAA championship. Well, so many people up and down the valley watched that event. Hey, guys, watched that event. But nationally, believe it or not, the NIT game between Penn State and Notre Dame had more viewers. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that. The NIT game. Now, you're like, Penn State basketball beat out Penn State wrestling's national championship? No, that's not what I'm saying. Who was the other team playing? Notre Dame was playing, and Penn State also has a brand. Penn State, it may be basketball, but it's still a Penn State name, and, oh, they're playing Notre Dame. Now, if Penn State were playing, say, Marquette that day, might not be the same, even though the Penn State-Marquette game, again, timing means something. It was a Tuesday night. That drew 33% more viewers than the Penn State-Notre Dame game did because it was prime time. You also had Louisville playing that night in the other quarterfinal. Louisville drew more people than anybody in that tournament for viewership. Viewership. Kentucky, Louisville, both drew the highest ratings in the NCAA and in the NIT. Penn State was second. But the Penn State Marquette game, because it was a Tuesday night, and was a lead in for Louisville. So you had some Louisville people watching, especially late, the Marquette game before it ended. Actually drew 33% more viewers than the NCAA wrestling championships. And the NIT, Penn State, Notre Dame, that brand name, Notre Dame, hey, has some meaning, actually had more viewers than the NCAA wrestling championship that night. Not by a lot, but again, it was a new game, too. It wasn't exactly what you call a prime time spot. Uh, at noon, which is also 9 a.m. on the West Coast. Uh, you know, So it wasn't in a prime time spot, but it still had more viewers. And again, that goes back to brand names, not sport recognition. That is not a sports recognition commentary. So please, don't get all offended here, as I know the wrestling fans get a little touchy sometimes. about This is not a sport commentary. It's a brand commentary. Who was playing in that game? All right, Penn State, and Penn State has followers, but Notre Dame which brings with it a fair amount of casual fans. The Subway alumni, as they're called, from, and they, 
they go to 50 states at, at Notre Dame. There's no question. And that makes a that makes a big difference. So the brand is there. Now the question is, what do we see in sports? We talked about golf. Golf is an individual sport. Tiger Woods is the brand. All right. Jordan Speed is the brand. All right. The suit. Oh, that's not. That can't. <laughs> well, we were waxing uh, poetic okay. about. Uh, <laughs> you got ooh. carried away, Steve. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, we were waxing poetic earlier in the hour about Muhammad Ali. I mean, we were talking about yeah. individual athletes right. and brands. Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer was a brand. Yeah. Uh, and. And that is exactly right. It may also fall into that category of, you know, well, time, trying to find that hero out there today. But timing means something. It, timing means everything in loss and in triumph. All right? Arnold Palmer's timing of being the kind of swashbuckling, great player, could get in trouble on the course, get himself out of trouble, make big plays, spectacular. Right when television started to really hit stride, which then opened the door for Nicholas and a rivalry. And then Nicholas ended up being arguably the best of all time. You can, you know, there's certain guys you can get in there. And that got golf rolling. All right? Ali. Ali hit it just right. In terms of that. Now, he hit it wrong in terms of the Vietnam War, obviously, because he missed, what, two and a half years? That sound right, Bob? Two and a half, two and a half years? Uh, but Ali was somebody that was on free TV a lot, right? Uh, and that made a big, big difference. Again, when people were just and there and there weren't many channels. Remember, there was ABC, CBS, NBC. May, PBS was really in its infancy, and maybe an independent channel. You know, that's exactly right. You've got. 946 channels today and nothing's on Bob no and you can watch <laughs> I can't you find can watch it the you know University of Alaska Anchorage uh, tiddlywink yeah. team going against what's the matter you from somewhere else and it's on the air it's just amazing there's so much going on and yet so little right. well and that's interesting you said it because for example take this time of the year college sports for example there's a lot of college baseball on there's a lot of college softball on but it's it doesn't draw. I mean, it, what's it? Do, what it's doing is it's giving you live sports. But you're you're getting marginally more college baseball fans, marginally more college softball fans. Now, when they have the College World Series, it does very well, and the Softball World Series does very well ratings wise. But there's a lot of the stuff that ends up being time filler. It, I was going to say the word is time filler. And it's actually the other thing is from a cost perspective, those games are really cheap to produce for the networks, yeah. and and that drives a lot of what's going on up in uh, Connecticut at ESPN headquarters. You know, at the bottom, I mean, they're losing viewership, and so they've got to be very economical in how what they produce, and and consequently what you see. Well, and that brings us to the next part. You talk about cheap to produce. Why are there so many studio shows, commentary shows like First Take? Well, except for paying, obviously, the talent. I mean, let's take the show Get Up, for example. Up, oh, Johnny Broom's in the house. Johnny Broom, Jeff, you had to have birdied. Uh, a little bit of a golf clap down there a minute or two ago. Oh, Bro Broom's like, he's 28 under par at the turn. Back in Seals Grove. It's, it's like he never left. It's, like, it's, it's a pot. <laughs> oh. What? No Judy. No Judy. No Judy Carr. Hey, Judy Carr, I miss you. Carol, yeah. we miss you, Carol. Cal Ripken Street still the, intact. And by the way, your husband wanted to make sure that we said that we all missed you too. So I mean, now that now that's a good guy right there. That's a good guy. So, so right. So just tell Carol, okay, misses you very very much. Um, that doesn't look like water. <laughs> <laughs> and. Judy Carr, we miss you. And he says he'll be right home after the golf. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you know, you know, you can come up with an excuse to say you got back spasms. All right, <laughs> that'll keep you from going home. All right. <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
I don't think we're going to go there. <laughs> I don't think we're going there. If you need one or two uh, more, catch up with uh, Matt and Johnny. They're right in front of you. But uh, you take, I mean, those shows, except for Get Up. Now, Get Up has $14.5 million in salaries on that set between Mike Greenberg, oh, Michelle yeah. Beadle, and Jalen Rose. I am not complaining about their salaries. I could care less. But I'm talking about normally outside of that expense, they're relatively inexpensive to do. You have a few camera positions. It's in a studio. It's contained and so forth. But I also think that they talk about the same stuff over and over and over again. They aren't advancing the ball. All right? And and I know that we do two hours every day. But I think we talk about a wide variety of things for uh, the Rice Commission. What's going on with that? You know, where are they missing? You know, what did they get right? Talking about, look, the expenses of college sports, about paying college players, at least – something thoughtful about how everything's laid out. So I think that advances the ball. Saying that LeBron's really great or LeBron had a bad night doesn't advance the ball. You know, uh, I've got a good friend from my college days who just celebrated his 30th anniversary from e- at ESPN, and one of his main jobs was to be the uh, production manager for the Little League World Series. When he started, they paid the Little League World Series $25,000 in broadcast rights for the finals. And uh, the reason they, they broadcast it was because it was so inexpensive to produce back in the day. And then it caught on. You know, a couple t- uh, kid from Cody, what's his name from? Wa- Cody Cody Webster. From uh, Washington. Kirkland, Washington. Yeah. 82. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he brought it home then uh, for American TV viewers, uh, this 12-year-old giant of a kid. Uh, but before that, it was just 25000 bucks a year for the Little League World Series. And that's why they broadcast it. And to their credit, of all the things that they do, I think that's among the better things that they do. I think they, they set a really wonderful game-in and game-out tone to make you realize that 11- and 12-year-olds are playing baseball. And a couple of them are 13. Well, no, no, but yeah, they're, they're 13 because if they turn – 13, August 1st is a number. So you do have some 13-year-olds there that are legally allowed to be there because of when their birthday is. All right, we'll come back. We'll wrap things up in a moment. From the Susquehanna Valley Country Club, home of the Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament, 27th annual event. They're going to raise between twenty and $30,000 today for the incredible Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Sunbury Motors. back. Great to have you with us. Tomorrow's show will be from the Medical Center. We've had a lot of text <laughs> messages uh, of people that are very, very concerned about the suit. Let's see. Let's see. This kid, no. Wife, no. A um, couple people he owes money to. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem to be very concerned. You know, and um, poor Kevin, I mean, he is such a good guy and so good-natured that we, I guess he's an easy target some days, but it's 50-50 that it actually really did hurt his back. No, he did. No, no, no. Yeah, no, he got back spasms today. That's, that's. I mean, that's, hey, that, that is, that's right. It's no picnic. By the way, uh, Bob asked me earlier, and I want to mention this, we, I, we had Scott Walker on earlier about coaches versus cancer, which is coming up at the Penn State golf courses at the end of the month, uh, Medler Field, LeBron Park, they'll have the reception on the 31st. The tournament will be on the 1st. Bob asked earlier about uh, Live for Life, which is going to be June 30th, kidney cancer research. And for our dear friend whom we think the absolute world of, that's a very important fundraiser, kidney cancer research. So I want to make sure you have that circled on your calendars as well. This we circle every year because all the people that benefit from the YMCA's and the greater Susquehanna Valley. It's incredible. And the Purdy Memorial Golf Tournament every year, giving back. And, again, they think they the door is open maybe to some record numbers between twenty and $30,000. And because it's the way the tournament is done, it's a lot like Coaches versus Cancer. When you go to the Coaches versus Cancer Tournament, they take a lot of that money and, for example, my washing machine broke down. My family's a victim of cancer. We don't have the money to do it. They'll buy you the washing machine. I mean, that's what they do with, with the Jamie Bestwick Fund, with the Perks Fund. 
that comes as an offshoot of this. It's like handing the people the money yourself. That's what this tournament does. This is a lot like going over and just handing money to the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA. Now, is there some overhead in terms of the cart rentals and things like that? Yeah, of course there is. Uh, but this does a lot of good for a lot of people. And, again, I love watching a community like this come together. You know, as a little kid, I went to the Danville YMCA, and the big treat for us every year was to go down to what is now the Greater Susquehanna YMCA and swim in a real big swimming pool. And that was the, the great fun for a bunch of kids. So they benefit people up and down this valley. Absolutely. And that's, what, that's why we're here. And that's why the Purdy family has done a brilliant job. And Purdy Insurance, a brilliant job of putting something like this together. And Bonnie Wasmer does an incredible job for the Y, as does her entire staff. It's been a privilege for us to be here and have fun at it. Yes, Kevin is wounded. All right? Yeah, it, 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 all kidding aside, he, he's going to have to go in for an adjustment tomorrow, but he has back spasms. And so he is he is absolutely wounded. I mean, Jamie had to take him over to the medical center today. And <laughs> feel better, buddy. Feel oh, better. We hope you feel better because Jamie's never fooled. So he must be really wounded. <laughs> but, all right, so we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow's show, Dick Girardi on the Kentucky Derby tomorrow, right out of the gate at 315. Abdullah we'll Anderson, Bucknell great, signed an undrafted free agent contract with the Bears. We're going to talk to him tomorrow at 406. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us today from the Susquehanna Valley Country Club on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Okay.